Uh, thanks, Denis, for the presentation. So uh, I'm going to talk to you today about the Global Cholera Database. Um, this is going to be a very short presentation, so we'll try for a live demo and see how that goes. Um, just for those of you that aren't as familiar with this project, um, the purpose of this database is that we, um, back in 2013 when we started this project, realized there was a gap in centralized cholera surveillance data. And so um, we, we set out to create a database that could flexibly accommodate lots of different kinds of data because the surveillance data wasn't being reported in a standardized way by different countries. And um, so we, we wanted to, to build something that could, could capture at least some information about cholera incidents around the world. And um, one of the reasons for collecting this data was to produce gridded estimates of mean annual incidence of suspected cholera burden. So some of you may have seen our maps from a few years ago of mean annual incidence across sub-Saharan Africa from 2010 to 2016. And the, the principles of this database are um, one, to be able to flexibly accommodate data that is linked to specific places and times. So I, I'm talking a lot about incidence data, but you could imagine a lot of different kinds of data being linked to a place and a time. For example, vaccination campaign data or documents. Um, for example, national cholera control plans that are you know specific to a country and period of time. Um, you could also imagine research data, serological studies also being linked in location and time. And so the, the core principle of our database is this, um, is this uh, linkage of what we, what we call location periods. So um, I'm gonna show you a few of the features of the database. And um, you can see we have this uh, landing page of what we call observation collections. Each of these observation collections represents a single source document. So that could be one set of situation reports from a country. It could be a single ProMed report that was you know, found on Relief Web. It could be a WHO Afro Bulletin. It could be any, any sort of form. Um, and what we could do is, for example, search um, all of the different uh, observation collections that we have in a country, if I can figure out how to use this Azerty keyboard. <laughs> um, so for example, all of the data that we have in Malawi, um, you can see will get filtered down. And one of, the, one of the challenges, of course, of the data is that because it's not a standardized surveillance data, you could have overlapping observation collections, overlapping reports of a single outbreak, for example. So you can see that we have um, source documents that cover the same period of time in a, in a given location. Um, one, one thing, though, that we've been trying to do is curate those um, sort of messy data into more unified data sources. And uh, for example, this source document that I selected is a relatively clean set of data from at the weekly and admin two level in Malawi. And it, it goes from 2012 through 2018. And so um, we've been trying to go through our, our data set, what we currently have in the database, identify these sort of unified data sets and tag them as a unified source so that we know that these are high quality data sets that we could potentially extract or, or use for visualization um, and, and other further analyses. Um, and this is just an example of some of the metadata that we collect. We try to incorporate the case definition as well as um, the type of time criteria that was used. This is actually symptom onset date as opposed to um, facility visits. Another feature of the database is um, looking is sort of the spatial structure. So you could see that there was a shape file of Malawi that was shown. Um, you could, uh, because the, the information is linked in space and time, we have this sort of spatial database uh, that you can search and identify whether we have shape files, whether we have uh, linked information um, about a specific location. So this is just an example of Lodongwe City in Malawi. Uh, we have a shape file that presumably the borders haven't changed, and so we have this location period from 1800 to 2020 for this specific shape. 
Um, the other feature that some of you may have also seen is related to what we call the country profile. So this is um, a centralized source or a visualization dashboard that allows us to hopefully get a glimpse of the epidemiological situation in the country. So this is an example again in Malawi where um, this is the epi curve that we saw from that unified data source I showed you before. And you can filter down and uh, this the red bars represent suspected cases, the gray bars represent uh, reported deaths that were in the data set. Um, and we're hoping that we can identify these unified data sources across different countries and display the epi curves both at the national level and subnational level um, in the country profile. Another aspect of the country profile is the data explorer mode. So here, um, there are a, a lot of different buttons and we're trying to make this a little more simpler, but um, it, it has a combination of things. So one is a set of modeling outputs. Um, sometimes this takes a little while to load, but uh, this is supposed to be showing the gridded mean annual incidence estimates that we have modeled back in 2018. But we've also um, made some effort working with Malika and uh, the OCV working group to, to ingest some of the vaccination campaign data. So this is an example of the vaccination campaigns that were conducted over the past few years, which, um, which areas and how many doses were actually uh, targeted in specific locations. And this table on the right corresponds to the, the data that you see on the left. Um, and then I think the last thing I wanted to give a plug to is this uh, seasonality tab. Um, this is also a modeling result that has come from our group. We actually, the paper is actually getting published in Lancet Global Health today, later tonight. Um, but basically for, for countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, we tried to estimate the seasonality in different regions of the country. And Malawi just happens to have the same seasonality pattern throughout, which is why you don't see anything on the left side, but um, this is representing the relative seasonal patterns across different months in the country. Um, and then at the bottom of this page, we have a, a similar view to what I showed you before, which shows all of the uh, types of data that are, are linked with Malawi, incidence data primarily, as well as uh, documents that were used to uh, fill in this data. So I know it's just a short presentation, but um, we've been working on the public side of this database for a while. And some of the things that we have planned over the next few months are expanding the external access to the data. Um, I mean, this is supposed to be uh, accessible to, to GTFCC members and partners that are interested in, in looking at incidence data. And um, we're hoping to expand the access to the API as well as um, pilot some of the dashboard features with countries that are interested in working with us. And then um, more on the internal side, because this project was developed out of our initial research goals of, of having a modeling and mapping pipeline, we've also been uh, trying to streamline some of that work uh, on the back end, which isn't very visible here. But um, yeah, that's a short presentation. Thanks so much for the time. And I'll turn it back to Denise.